Eat poop. <laughs> so, uh, trending slightly below the bearish uh, resistance here on ES into the end of the day. I think I think overall we're breaking down. Uh, we'll probably see a continuation of that next week, but uh, very, very slowly in a way that does not spike volatility at all, which means that out-of-the-money puts suck really bad. I win uh, the end-of-the-week uh, prediction with my beautiful, almost spot-on prediction of 47.94, whatever the f*** this is. Uh, it doesn't tell me the coordinates. It's like 47.94.50. Dork very close at 4,700, though. Uh, so I think I've got him just beat by 30 cents there. And then Jay Fresh way the f*** off down at 46.70. Thank God, because he really needed to throw on that one. Uh, GME still being shorted, starting to fall below Delta neutral. So now we should start to see the downside on GME accelerate a bit. Uh, same deal with Upstart, uh, now, now, now closing below Delta neutral today. I think the next major resistance to the downside right now is at about 17. So we'll keep seeing that fall. Fubo flat for the third day in a row not more liquid not less liquid uh no covering really going on but we may see a little bit next week through the etf ftd period so maybe look to the upside after tuesday siri i think buffett bought some more of this shit i'm pretty sure he's just lending shares on it for a 20 percent yield 30 Top bounced up a little bit today at a spike in covering, but it's being shorted really, really hard again. So uh, hopefully we see, you know, another cycle through of liquidity uh, as they try to short it down. It holds $2, well, $2 to 190 um, And then there'll be an entry opportunity a little bit later. Um, either that or we're going to start to see covering on it. So, um, and if that's the case, I would look probably until next next week for that beyond uh moved down a little bit towards the close today still still pretty illiquid it doesn't seem like they're getting any more liquidity in the underlying but they're still rolling liquidity from iwn to iwo and that means you know more more chop more sideways price action but slightly improved over the last three days i mean it's it's technically gained about 40 cents or i guess that'd be about five percent so it's not it's not doing terribly uh, it's just not just not doing great. There's still a little bit of liquidity left before they completely exhaust it. And the only thing that's really driving the price improvement there instead of it just going down is the fact that they have forced covering every day, which does actually continue and pick up uh, as we move into OPEX. So again, this could still be a good opportunity to find some entries on it. And remember, Theta is a good thing to have in case there's any kind of or deferment with the covering schedule. Broad commodities up today. They were up a lot more this morning, but then they came down pretty hard. Uh, Dixie still pressuring that 102.50 level. Hasn't quite crossed it, but uh, that that managed to push yields back up again today. Um, we've still we're closing the day with the 10 year above 4%. I think this is the first close with the 10 year above 4% since back at the beginning of December, right? Yeah, December 13th, so right before the FOMC meeting. Core one month and three month turning down again as vol shorting picks up significantly today. I don't know how that's going to turn out in the next week. Obviously, we still we still closed below 4,700. Generally, over the weekend, we see a pretty big spike in volatility going into Monday. If we do, that might put some of these positions at risk, but they're still fighting back very, ha very hard against vol rising. Obviously... The yield on vol almost turned positive today. Uh, ended the day a little bit lower here, around negative 6%, but we did peak at 0.04%. Um, remember, as that vol yield on vol turns positive, you know, volatility will probably move into backwardation. That's going to make people want to go long vol and uh, push up, uh, push up push up yields and we're going to see a greater demand for volatility and and with such a large short position on volatility the more that's pressured the more risk it presents carry trade being leaned into pretty hard still uh we're, we're below the 10 145 high on usd jpy that we saw that, like yesterday but still still roughly in the same range uh move isn't updated yet skew turned up a bit today vol shorting is just crazy right now this is at 
27.05%, which is still significantly in excess of uh, where we saw the hardest volatility shorting uh, during Wilmageddon by about 7%. And before the flash crash in 2010, we're only, we're only about 2% off from how strong the vol short was there. So yeah, this is, this is still just crazy um and obviously if anything were to come in like you know i don't know the forward yield curve on volatility moving positive um to drive demand for volatility this this could just really go crazy i could see vol hitting you know 30 40 it's 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 really 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 overshorted 52.68 percent of the s p now under the 20-day moving average so even though even though the market did end up ultimately closing up a few points uh from from the low of yesterday, which was close, we did see the broader index move down a little bit more. And I think I think most of those losses were in tech, where we see uh, you know, QQQ with slightly lower gains on the day. I have an RSP still supportive. I think that's it. Yeah, that's about it. Um, I'll have, we don't have a holiday this weekend for the first time. So uh, members only stream will be Sunday at 12.30 p.m. Um, and I'll have Pickles Picks out for you guys on Sunday night. Thank you all so much for tuning in this week. Um, I hope everyone did really well. I think I think we called everything pretty accurately for, for, for the majority of the week. And uh, even the longer term assumptions ended up being correct. So yeah, enjoy your gains and enjoy your weekend. And I'll see you all next week. Later, guys.